ABC7 Bangor. This is ABC7 News at Noon. Maine State Police are investigating a homicide involving a teenage girl in Mount Vernon. Coming up, we'll tell you what we know so far. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. Also, the Waldo County Sheriff's Office is investigating a tractor accident that killed one person in Northport Tuesday night. And Maine is on track to set a homicide record this year. We'll take a look at the numbers along with the rest of our stories. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Happy Thursday, Devin. Alrighty, happy Thursday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Lurgy and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. Already a small craft advisory is in effect, lasting till about 10 p.m. later on tonight, though. We have an area of low pressure that will be moving in, causing some gusty winds, which is why we're, we we're watching the southwestern parts of the state there. Other areas under a heat advisory until 8 p.m. this evening as well because of all the heat and humidity that continues to move in. Otherwise, a nice afternoon with just some clouds moving in, but we're going to be watching late, late afternoon and the evening time frame for strong to possibly severe thunderstorms along this line right here that doesn't look like much right now, but as the tracks will run in more of that warm, moist air, and that'll be enough fuel to get some showers and storms going this afternoon. About 4 to 5 o'clock or so, and again, some of those storms may get strong to severe, but once it clears out of here, it will become mostly clear, but some fog will also give us some issues, especially as we head towards tomorrow morning. Some wind again up to 15 to maybe 25 miles per hour throughout the afternoon afternoon, calming down overnight, and especially as we head towards the daytime tomorrow. So your forecast for today, upper 80s, part of the afternoon thunderstorms possible. Some of those may get strong to severe, less south wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Later on tonight, upper 60s, scattered strong to severe thunderstorms early, then calming down afterward, we'll have south wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. And your early forecast for the rest of the afternoon period, becoming part of the county for a while. The more storms by the evening. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. Maine State Police are investigating a homicide involving a teenage girl in Mount Vernon. State Police spokesperson Shannon Moss says on Monday around 6 p.m., a mother returned to her home to find her 14-year-old daughter deceased. The State Police Major Crimes Unit was called in to investigate. Moss says evidence technicians and detectives worked into the early morning hours looking for evidence and conducting interviews. The chief medical examiner's office has ruled her death a homicide. Kennebec County detectives and state troopers searched the greater Kennebec County area looking for a red 2010 Chevy Impala with a main support wildlife registration plate of 510 AVW after the mother discovered the vehicle was missing from the driveway. Officers located the vehicle Tuesday morning in the town of Wayne. Detectives would like to speak with anyone who may have seen the car Monday evening or Tuesday morning. Anyone with information is asked to call state police at 624-7076. The U.S. Marshal Service Violent Offender Task Force has arrested 35-year-old Raymond Lester of Portland, who was wanted in connection with a hit, fatal hit-and-run accident in Acadia National Park earlier this summer. Lester was wanted by Maine State Police on a warrant issued on June 21st for one count of murder. 35-year-old Nicole McComey died in a hit-and-run incident just days before near the Scudic Education and Research Center in Winter Harbor. Police had asked for the public's help in locating a vehicle they believed to be involved, which was registered to Raymond Lester. Police say he had been in a relationship with McComey. Lester was also being sought on a federal warrant for unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. Investigators in Maine learned Lester had fled to the U.S. and was in Cancun, Mexico. Mexican authorities, in collaboration with the U.S. Marshal Service, took Lester into custody Monday evening without incident. According to authorities, Lester has been transferred back to the United States. He is expected back in Maine later this week. The Waldo County Sheriff's Office is investigating a tractor accident that killed one person in Northport Tuesday night. The Waldo County Dispatch Center received a 911 call around 7 p.m. Witnesses told deputies a loader going north on Atlantic Highway rolled backwards down the road before it left the side of the road and rolled over into a ditch. Officials say 62-year-old Scotty Richards of Northport was thrown from the loader and died as a result of his injuries. The cause of the accident remains under investigation. Maine is on track to set a homicide record this year. According to the Attorney General's office, the state has seen 18 homicide cases, 
with the record being 31 set in 2008. The AG says those 18 cases, one was labeled a juvenile homicide and another was eventually labeled manslaughter. Most of the other cases involved domestic violence. We know this is happening and it has devastating consequences to communities and it can, in fact, sometimes lead to someone deciding to take the life of um, the individuals that they're in the relationship or in a family with. If you or a loved one is dealing with domestic violence, call Partners for Peace at their 24-7 hotline. That number is 1-800-863-9909. You can learn more by visiting our website, foxbangor.com. Three people have been arrested in connection with alleged drug distribution from a home in Hamden. According to MDEA, 31-year-old Dwayne Henry of Mass Springfield, Massachusetts, is charged with trafficking in drugs. His bail was set at $5,000 cash. 31-year-old Andy Pacchio of Springfield, Massachusetts, is charged with aggravated drug trafficking due to the quantity of drugs seized. And 37-year-old Jessica Bell of Hamden is also charged with aggravated drug trafficking. Maine Drug Enforcement Agency Commander Peter Arno says over the past several months, drug agents and the Hamden Police Department have been investigating the group for allegedly distributing fentanyl and crack cocaine from a Ruth Avenue home. On Tuesday, they searched the home. Arno says they seized a handgun, approximately 80 grams of crack cocaine, 200 grams of fentanyl, and approximately $10,000 in suspected drug proceeds. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, while we're enjoying the sunny summer days, there are some people down east who are hoping for rain, and they have a good argument for it. We'll explain when we return. Established in 1925, Bangor Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful gifts for almost 100 years. Whatever the occasion, our premium collection of colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets have warmed hearts for generations. We strongly support the Buy Local movement, purchasing directly from local farms and growers, and we are committed to the preservation of our environment. Bangor Floral, located at 332 Harlow Street. Stop in today to experience a flower shop like no other. I work long hours to provide for my family, but with runaway inflation, it's getting harder to make ends meet. Instead of lowering costs for families, Washington liberals are attacking America's tech innovators. That's the wrong agenda at the wrong time. The left's bill will destroy jobs, make China stronger, and America weaker. Working people like me will pay the price. No Republican senator should support this liberal agenda. Tell Senate conservatives to reject the left's bill. Got a special event coming up? Want to look unique? Check out these cowboy hats at Gas Water Supply and Western Wear in Orono. We've got your Western boot, whether it be men's, ladies, children's boots, work boots, casual boots, show boots, just having fun boots. We've got your Western boots. Complete your look with a Western shirt, belt, and a buckle that is as unique as the American West. Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear, where the American West comes alive in Maine. Attention Medicare beneficiaries. If you have or are eligible for Medicaid, please listen closely. You may be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan from WellCare with a zero or low plan premium. Call now. We can answer your questions and help you enroll over the phone. WellCare provides access to essential benefits that go beyond original Medicare, such as dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage with free home delivery. Plus, extra benefits like free over-the-counter health care items, free transportation, free gym membership, and home-delivered meals. Get more access to care with WellCare's telehealth services, including online doctor visits and a 24-hour nurse advice line. WellCare's contract with Medicare to provide plans that may be perfect for you. Call 1-844-471-0022 now. That's 1-844-471-0022. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Protesters gathered in front of the Augusta Civic Center Wednesday as the Maine Department of Environmental Protection began a two-day appeal hearing for Central Maine Power's corridor project. Sierra Jordan was there. 
In May of 2020, the Department of Environmental Protection approved a permit to allow Central Maine Power to construct a 145-mile high-voltage transmission line. This will send hydropower from Quebec to electricity customers in Massachusetts. People of Maine don't want this. We don't benefit from it. Our forest is going to be torn up. Anti-quarter advocates say the transmission line will have negative impacts on the environment, including damaging undeveloped forests and wildlife habitat, jeopardizing the creation of clean energy jobs and more. Cold water fisheries that are probably the best in the country, um, recreational opportunities, wildlife, it has enormous impacts uh, in a really precious part of the state. And we just don't think it's uh, the right place. In 2020, three appeals were filed by the Natural Resources Council of Maine, Next Era Energy Resources, and the West Forks Group, but took more than a year for the BEP to review the appeal. When the permit was awarded, we've appealed that. Why it's taken so long for them to hear our appeal, so that's, that deserves an investigation all of its own. Meanwhile, in last year's election, more than 60 percent of voters approved a ban on construction of the CMP corridor. It is now up to the Maine Supreme Judicial Court to determine whether the CMP corridor construction can continue. They're ignoring the people's referendum. They're ignoring their own DEP suspended the permit. Anti-corridor advocates stood in the hot sun right outside Augusta Civic Center holding signs that read, revoke CMP's permit, follow the law, Mainers voted no, and other messages. We want the BEP to know that our opinion hasn't changed, and we're watching them, and we expect full transparency as they're making the determinations. The BEP meeting is not over yet. It will continue tomorrow, July 21st, starting at 9 a.m., right here at the Augusta Civic Center. At the end of tomorrow's meeting, they will decide whether or not they will host a public hearing. In Augusta, I'm Sierra Jordan reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. The push for paid family medical leave is gaining momentum. Matthew Jaroncic has the latest. Advocates for Maine's Women's Lobby and Maine's People's Alliance are announcing that they have begun collecting signatures for a potential referendum question for paid family and medical leave that would be on the Maine ballots in 2023. Should this be passed, people would be allowed to take at least 16 weeks of paid leave for reasons like maternity care, caring for a loved one, or deployment with funding coming from both the employers and employees who decide to opt in. It would be being able to take care of yourself. It would be to care for loved ones. It also would allow you to take care of all of the logistics and, um, and things involved with managing a loved one's deployment or return from deployment and, and still have your job to go back to. Maine's People's Alliance Policy Director Kate Blackford says advocates have been pushing for these changes for a long time. We have had members from our organization and people across the state participate in that process and the clamoring for paid leave in Maine and the support for a generous, robust, accessible program is really, really strong. With COVID-19 and inflation front of mind, Blackford knows that the need for paid time leave will exist for many people in the future. All of us are going to need paid leave at some point, whether it's for our own health, whether it's for the people that we love. It's something that all of us really could and should be relying on to make sure that we've got that stability. Should this get passed, Maine would join 12 states in creating paid family leave insurance programs, joining California, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and others. In studio, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7, Fox 22. While well, most Mainers typically hope for sunny days, farmers are currently hoping for more rain. Dylan Holloway spoke to a third-generation farmer. The blueberry business is one of the biggest industries in the state of Maine. Courtney Hammond is a third-generation blueberry farmer and has been the manager of Lynch Hill Farm since 2016. He says last season the state had a near-record crop, but this year is more uncertain thanks to a lack of rain. We had the... Uh a need for some rain. We got some in the last couple of days, which was a big boon, but the month of July has been uh, abnormally dry. Uh, we had less than an inch of rain for the entire month, uh, whereas last year, you know, we were near six inches for the month of July leading up to the harvest. Hammond, who runs the farm with his family, says if the rain doesn't come, it will ultimately cut into their farm gate profit. The drought in 2020, you know, reduced our crop by about 80 percent, and uh, that had a huge impact on us. He says last year's demand for blueberries was so high that Lynch Hill Farms has close to no inventory left over to sell. I think a lot of people are finding out about the health benefits of, of the wild blueberries, both in uh, uh, the antioxidant levels that they contain as well as 
some of the new research that's uh, looking at cardiovascular benefits as well as the brain health and the cognitive benefits of eating wild blueberries. Hammond says it means a great deal to him to be able to carry on the legacy of his father and grandfather. For our family and for a lot of families in Washington County, this is a way of life that we've, we've known and, uh, you know, desperately trying to preserve that. To learn more about Lynch Hill Farms, you can go to lynchhillfarms.com. More information on the benefits of blueberries can be found at wildblueberries.com. Reporting from Harrington, I'm Dylan Holloway for ABC7 and Fox 22. Coming up, a grant program was unveiled yesterday that will be a big help for Down East Maine. Details are next. We'll be right back. If you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. There's absolutely no fee unless we win money for you. I called the twos after a big truck put me in the hospital. I never paid Lowry and Associates a penny out of my pocket. They came to the hospital, got my medical bills paid, and got me $350,000. I'm Jim with Lowry and Associates. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22 22 the signs of summer are here. The sun's out for the evening commute. Whistles and clapping echo from the ball field. And a day at the lake brings the family together. Valley Home Services offers whole home comfort, serving northern Maine to Portland. With the push of a button on a Fujitsu heat pump, you're ready for whatever summer brings. Humid days or cool nights, come home to comfort with Valley Home Services. Home is our middle name. I know there's conflicting information about Dupuytren's contraction. I thought I couldn't get treatment yet. Well, people may think that their contracture has to be severe to be treated, but it doesn't. If you can't lay your hand flat on the table, talk to a hand specialist. But what if I don't want surgery? Well, then you should find a hand specialist certified to offer non-surgical treatments. Well, what's the next step? Visit findahandspecialist.com today to get started. Dine on the deck with a delicious view at the Lucerne Inn and Ryan's Pub, now open. Experience outdoor dining at its finest seven days a week with award-winning dishes from their executive chef, Arturo Montes. Dining on the deck at Ryan's Pub is an unforgettable culinary experience you'll want to share with your family, friends, business partners, or that special someone. Your next visit to the Lucerne Inn will feel like the first all over again. The news. Papa Roach falling in reverse. The Rockzilla Tour with very special guests Hollywood Undead and Bad Wolves. Friday, July 29th, Main Settings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine. Papa Roach falling in reverse. On sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Medical provider training in rural Maine will be expanded thanks to a grant program unveiled yesterday. Governor Janet Mills announced she is providing $1.6 million through the Maine Jobs and Recovery Plan to expand opportunities for training for health care professionals and medical providers in rural communities. According to the release, Maine ranks among the lowest states in terms of graduate medical education opportunities. The initiative offers funding to support new expansion or development of new medical residency programs in underserved areas for new physicians. It will also support clinical training opportunities for students. Getting sick can be expensive. Getting sick with Lyme disease can be especially expensive. ABC's M. Wynn looks at the numbers. Lyme disease is a condition that can be transmitted through a tick bite. Early symptoms can look like the flu and often involve a rash. According to CDC data, the total financial burden of this disease is estimated to be close to a billion dollars. Researchers looked at medical bills as well as personal and societal costs of persons infected with Lyme. Adding these all together led to staggering costs to healthcare systems, patients, and communities. They found an average out of 
out-of-pocket costs of $1,200 for each patient. The societal cost was upwards of $2,000 per patient, taking into account lost wages and health care charges. The CDC encourages everyone to focus on tick bite prevention and seeking early medical attention to reduce costs. If you're concerned that you have Lyme disease, doctors say you should seek immediate care with your health care provider. With this Medical Minute, I'm Emwyn. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Did you know that it's possible to buy the wrong type of flooring for your home? Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional contractor, the experts at Don DeCal Mainwood Floors are here to help, offering solid pro advice from choosing the right material and color to installation. Don DeCal features the highest quality hardwood flooring sourced from lumber right here in Maine, from Maine traditions. Not only will you get a floor you'll love, you'll get a floor that will last. Don DeCal Mainwood Floors, buy from the best, forget the rest. If you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. They got my hospital and surgery bills paid for and got me $250,000. Call the twos. We win for you. Goose River Farm and Meat Store is conveniently located on Route 3 across from Hammond Lumber in Belfast. They have a wide selection of meat and poultry, including beef, pork, lamb, chicken, duck, rabbit, and turkey. Buy your steak and meats for grilling this summer. When moderate to severe ulcerative colitis persists, put it in check with Rinvoke, a once daily pill. When UC got unpredictable, I got rapid symptom relief with Rinvoke. Check. When UC held me back, I got lasting steroid free remission with Rinvoke. Check. And when UC got the upper hand, Rinvoke, Rinvoke helped, helped visibly repair, repair the, the colon, colon lining. lining. Check. Check. Rapid symptom relief, lasting steroid free remission, and a chance to visibly repair the colon lining. Check, check, and check. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC in check and keep it there with Rinvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Rinvoke and learn how AbbVie could help you save. The Brewer Historical Society seeks to preserve historic antidotes, but the nonprofit organization says they need help. A.J. Douglas has details. We put the word out that we needed help, and a lot of people started to show up, but it's always needing just a little bit more. The Brewer Historical Society has requested additional volunteer members to help them collect research for homes, professional buildings, and people. Mayor Michelle Labrie Daniels says joining the team requires little commitment as meetings are only scheduled once a month for nine months out the year. Organizers are encouraging younger people to join as well. We put the word out that we needed help and a lot of people started to show up, but it's always... A, needing just a little bit more. It's not a lot of time. Um, the younger people, I mean, they have time for <clears throat> looking on their Facebook phone and their phone, but how about spending maybe that hour doing something that is important to the community? The nonprofit works to provide one high school student with a $1,000 scholarship through community fundraisers. The organization is working to complete a children's program that will educate middle schoolers by teaching them about Brewer's history. Most of them don't know that there was um, brick building here in Brewer, that there was the ice making here. So those are things that we'd like the children to learn and to grow up, and probably they'll educate their parents. Anyone interested in joining the Brewer Historical Society is welcome to attend their next meeting, which is on September 12th, or email Society at gmail.com. In Brewer, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. The town of Old Orchard Beach has removed a barrier to the beach. Megan Wilgos has more. I met with a family who loves the beach, but due to mobility issues, they had difficulty getting to the shore. Luckily, with a few calls and four abnormally sized wheels, they're able to get back on the sand and enjoy what Maine has to offer. To know it's right there and not be able to get to it is just... That's heartbreaking. All Melinda Torrens wanted to do was bring her son with cerebral palsy down for a walk on the beach. But it was a struggle trying to figure out, all right, how do you help him maneuver 
because a cane does not work in sand. After some research, she discovered the Old Orchard Beach Recreation Wheelchair Rental Program. It's just a wonderful program because it truly is. Every time our staff comes and delivers the beach wheelchair, it's like smiles and it's people with their family, with their kids, with their grandkids on the beach. And Ten wheelchairs are placed throughout hotels along the water and in the recreation office at a first come first serve basis. They are free to use despite their cost of $2,000. I mean, it's worth the price, but looking at one, you wouldn't think that. Well, you wouldn't think that when you look at the things that it appears to be made out of, but just having the ability to put that all together and to make it safe. Just remember over the hill. I don't want to fall out. <laughs> they really are, you know, they're balanced and everything perfectly so that people don't tip over. Ah, gorgeous. Torrin's mother, Angelica Barrett, had two knee surgeries, making it difficult to walk in the sand. Before you discover these wheelchairs, how did you get to the beach? Um, I haven't actually been for a while, so this, is, this was a real plus. How long do you think? Oh gosh, it's probably been five years. Barrett says she grew up on the beach and is happy to finally be back. Gorgeous, it's not as hot as I thought it'd be. It's very, very comfortable. Not scary at all. And, you know, just really, really pleasant. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? All righty, happy Thursday afternoon. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's artist trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, with locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Already a small credit advisory is in effect until about 10 p.m. tonight along the southwestern parts of the state. A cold front moving in, which will help to stir up the ocean again. Heat advisory in effect until about 8 p.m. on Thursday as well, so later on tonight. And as courtesy of some of the heat, and of course, a big heat wave that continues to set up shop across a good part of the state. But for now, though, we're looking pretty decent out there with just a few passing clouds, but we're going to be watching our next system moving in from the west, going toward the east. Now give us a chance for some strong to possibly severe thunderstorms late afternoon in the evening time frame. We're talking large hail and maybe some damaging winds with some of those storms that may try to move in. Wave height's not bad at this point, only at about two to three feet, according to some of the buoys out there. So for now, we're looking pretty decent. Gusty winds up to about 25 miles per hour possible today, stirring up that ocean. But then later on the side, we're looking pretty good, becoming uh, just a little bit more in the way of some calmer winds, just some gusts up to about 10 miles per hour in a few areas. All right, our average high is 81 degrees, upper 80s to lower 90s on the way today, all the way through Sunday before we fall into the middle 80s on Monday. Then Tuesday into Wednesday, back into the lower 80s, a little bit more comfortable for this time of the year. But unfortunately, again, the dew points will be on the rise again, though, and are especially high today into the upper 60s to possibly lower 70s. Friday and Saturday, they fall back a little bit. Then by Sunday and Monday, they rise again, making it up close to the 70 degree line again. So again, more humid air will soon be on the way. Already, your UV index forecast for today will be at an eight. That is considered very high, so a burn time of around 15 minutes. So hats, sunglasses, sunscreen, and shade will be needed to avoid a bad sunburn again today. Future cast watching, watching for scattered strong and severe thunderstorms again late afternoon to the evening time frame. Becoming mostly clear later on site with some more fog that will be on the way. And tomorrow, definitely looking a lot better. But here's the severe threat for today. Yellow, a slight risk, 2 out of 5 for large hail and damaging winds. And a lower risk farther down to the south and east in the green area. So your forecast coming up for today. All right, partly cloudy, some afternoon thunderstorms. Highs in the upper 80s south went up to about 25 miles per hour. Later on site, already right, upper 60 scattered strong and severe thunderstorms. South wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast were partly cloudy by Saturday, mostly cloudy by Sunday. More storms as we head towards Monday. Well, it's looking like some decent weather for the weekend. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.
ABC7, Fox 22, Village Variety, and Glenburn Landscaping and Supply Company. Want to send...